Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Dan, JR Mom, joined as always by JR Dad. Hi. How is it going, JR Dad? Pretty good. Excellent, excellent. Uh, yeah. The cocktail of the week is the champagne cocktail. Would you like to try it? Sure, yes. I'm, I'm going to try it first. Hang on, you got to wait. All right. Delish. I've been waiting this whole time. Oh, that's good. Here you go. This is a very classic cocktail. So you take a sugar cube, put it in the bottom of a champagne glass, soak it with Angostura bitters, so just put a dash or two of Angostura bitters on it, and then put champagne in your glass. It's be ah! Hang on, Cheggs just fell over. Let me pause this. And we're back. Yeah. Cheggs has taken to walking around in the evenings. Which is good. But he doesn't know where he's going, and he also has no traction. Which is bad. So he just kind of splooted out <laughs> on the tile. Which was worse for us than for him. Yeah, and so I moved him to the carpet. Yeah, we've tried booties on him, but it's almost easier to just keep an eye on him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he doesn't walk as much even as St. Patrick. No, because he doesn't know where he's going. So, all right, let's see. We got stuff to talk about, Gio Dad, and frankly, a lot of it is about me this week. Is this we need to talk because then I'm worried? No. Okay, and, good. Then I'm and not worried. you should never be worried when I'm like, Gio Dad, we need to talk. It's, I don't know. <laughs> see, all right, listen, people, relationship advice. If your partner goes, we need to talk, and then you make a face that's scared, it makes them not want to talk, so you shouldn't do that. Because then they go, they have an important thing to tell you, but then they don't want to tell you because you just made the face at them. But that's like when people say, can I ask a question? I mean, it's like the buildup is worse than the thing. I think this is a you problem. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. What if I'm like, dear dad, we need to talk, and then I'm like, we just won a million dollars. Wouldn't you just tell me we won a million dollars? What are we talking about then? What are we going to talk about? It Just give me the million bucks. <laughs> or half of it or whatever. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> However much you want of it. All right. So let's... Anyway, the champagne cocktail, delicious. Delicious. I've, I've now finally tried it and it's, <laughs> oh, it's God, really good. Please. It's really good. <laughs> I just it, had the first sip. <laughs> it's good. It's just good. I mean, it's very good champagne. We, I mean, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. We had champagne with dinner and continuing on but this is it's just a I different think it'd take. be good with with regular champagne it'd be good too because i like angostura bitters yeah i like that bitter flavor i sometimes just drink angostura bitters in soda like club soda with like four or five dashes of bitters it's good yeah makes it interesting okay this is like gr mom versus nature week there is much there are many things to discuss and while you always win nature's been Oh. landing some blows all right so uh trigger warning for things with many legs maybe just skip ahead yeah so i'm sitting on the couch this is maybe over the weekend doing something with a dog I, I had come in from outside with a dog i was sitting on the couch dog was also on the couch and i feel like this kind of tickle on like the back of my neck like you know like a hair fell out and was just kind of brushing against could be my neck floof. could be it was a little more aggressive than that feeling normally is, but it didn't freak me out, and I just kind of brushed it. And then I felt it again, and I brushed it again, and it was... Now, I want to be a scientist about this. A three to four inch long centipede. Could have been longer. Jared, when Jared Dad talks about it, he's like, it was about a foot long, but I want to be scientific about I mean, it. it. It felt like a foot long. I admit it was not a foot long. It was... It was the length of a middle finger. Yes. It was clear. At least. Yeah, I think. It wasn't as thick, but it was all the squirmier. It was on me. It was uh. fucking in my hair and then crawling down my neck into my shirt. So Zero Dad is like right outside the front door drying a dog off. So I like feel yeah. this thing. The second time I'm like, oh, there's a thing back there. And I fully freak out as i have mentioned i have a phobia of bugs uh it has gotten this is better a normal response to something squealing around your neck totally normal i, I mean yes but i also have a phobia of yeah, bugs yeah, where no, i get real panicky i'm just saying actually you handle it really well I i'm good say. at doing the things that are normal to do but my emotional reactions are quite out of scale mm-hmm. uh don't dismiss my phobia no, dear dad don't i'm don't, not yeah I, i'm just praising your reaction thank you 
Uh, so anyway, I fucking flinged the thing off of me. It landed on the couch and was crawling around, and I ran to the front door. I was like, I need assistance in here immediately. I'm like, dear dad, I need you to kill that thing. And dear dad was great. He, like, picked up, I think there was, like, a towel on the couch. He picked the whole thing up and brought it outside and... Got rid of it. Got rid of it. Yep. Yep. And you, as I said, you, like, weren't screaming or freaking out. You were just like, this thing must die now. I know how to be appropriate on the outside. You did a good job. My Sorry you had to go through that. but It was not good. Yeah. So that's thing number one. That's that's the worst bad one. That's the bad one. Then I think I rubbed your neck to make sure there's nothing else I on there. I was like, don't touch it. Don't, don't touch me. <laughs> okay. I made sure to touch you in a non-tickly way. <sighs> All right. So then Monday, I flew to Orlando. I On Tuesday morning was my first in-person speaking event since COVID. I'm fully vaccinated. I'm like five weeks out from my, six weeks out from my second dose. Um, and this conference, I mean, they're definitely one of the first ones going and it was weird. I mean, like in a ballroom that would normally hold a thousand people, there were 120 people. It was very spaced out. <laughs> How are you doing? It was kind of like that. Um, but you know, I appreciate them trying to be like, can we do this safely? And it's a, you know, older audience there. And it's Florida. I, I mean, these people weren't, it wasn't a Florida event mm. right they came to florida but they were not people from florida oh, i mean a few of them were from florida but they were from all over can't blame them for that then no so anyway uh i flew to orlando and so i'm staying at my hotel the omni champions gate so it's like around a golf course i think the masters is up there maybe i don't know about golf um not the masters no no where is that augusta in georgia oh is there a similar kind of thing i mean it could be one of the golf tournaments could be interesting there. Mm-hmm. there are a lot of things called masters around there that's mm-hmm. why i wondered that anyway uh so it's like nine o'clock and i'm like feeling gross and i was like i'm just gonna go out for a walk in the dark but it's whatever it's a resort in orlando right it's Sounds just like the safest place in the world in the middle of nowhere i i wasn't walking in there was i'm just basically walking the perimeter of this golf resort so i'm walk walk walk. I probably, it was probably three miles that i walked total so i'm walking and i kind of get onto the golf course part and there's you know kind of sidewalks that run through it and i'm walking around this pond on the golf course and I see there's like a crane or something, like a big, tall bird standing on the edge of the pond as I'm approaching. And as I get closer, the bird decides to fly away because it's like, I don't want to deal with this crazy lady. And as the bird takes off, it turns out the giant gator in the pond that was about to eat the bird is like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> the bird just flew away and like flips around and like t- goes back in. Yeesh. I, in frustration maybe he was just ticked yes and like yeah fricka, fricka, i've been stalking this bird all day i i was like expecting the bird to take off i was not expecting the big gator like jumping around and turning tail at me uh it's a good thing that nobody was there because i made a bunch of weird freaked out sounds also an appropriate response yes no i do not have a phobia of gators i just have appropriate fear of gators i mean we're we're isolated from that in the keys we don't have have gators down here everyone else in florida i think knows not to go to a pond at the in dark because there's gators to be fair i was not like up on the edge of the pond right there was probably 20 feet to the the pond from the the sidewalk safe path really safer yeah I, i mean i was keeping an eye out for gators on the path but this gator was like in the pond hiding hiding uh yeah i mean we do have there's a gator in the blue hole there's two there's two gators in the blue hole, which is like a little freshwater pond, basically on Big Pine Key. But Weird. they don't go come like in the canals and stuff. In the upper keys, they do. Like Key Largo, there will be gators. Oh, really? In the canals, yeah. There's a picture of a gator and a manatee together in somebody's canal, That's like an, up in Key Largo. An, uneasy alliance. Yeah, uh, gator couldn't eat the manatee for sure. Manatee bigger than the gator. Yeah, and the manatee doesn't want to eat the gator. Uh, no. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I saw the gator and then as I continued my walk, I saw this chunk, apparently chunk of an asteroid enter the earth's atmosphere. It was amazing. It's like this big, like, oh, it looks like it's a big sparkly, like Like fireball shooting star. And then it turns like bright blue and 
like explodes. The whole sky lights up with this like blue white light, and then it keeps going, like sparkling out. I mean, the odds the coolest of you thing I've ever seen. outside looking in the right direction at the right time are are pretty good. We haven't bought a lottery ticket, have we? Frick -a -frick -a. If you uh, if use you'd up all your luck on that asteroid. If you want to see it on Gen Runs with Dogs on the Twitter page, I tweeted uh, there was. Man, talk about luck. There was some local news crew, I think in like West Palm Beach, who was out doing a Facebook live shoot of some like senior housing complex that had lost power and like the day before and was still without power at night. So they're like walking past the housing complex, doing a Facebook live, mm. talking about the issue. And like directly in front of them, they're like, and so, you know, the housing situation here. And the guy's like, what is that? Wow. And they just have this perfect view of it, like exactly in front of them. So they cut this great footage of it yeah. uh, and then went right back to their Facebook Live. But the clip of it, uh, I tweeted out on Gen Runs with Dogs. So if you want to see it, it was awesome. Yeah. Didn't and, wasn't Russian machine this time? Was not Russian machine. So Jared Dad breaks. is ref making a reference that literally three of our followers will get. It's a shout out to a good website manned by good people. It's a Washington Capitals hockey blog, and there was like a big fireball meteor in Russia probably four or five years ago. First reported in the U.S. by the hockey blog because like their Russian counterpart had footage of it. Who and followed the Russian, the KHL, I think, was the connection, right? Yeah. Jared, are, two are, inside, two inside, two somebody else's inside. I, I mean, we got like there are a few Caps fans who follow us, but they're not going to know what that is. Well, now they'll be sorry that they don't follow such a cool team. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> you guys, I tried to keep the podcast interesting for everybody, and Jared, me too. No. Oh, yeah, me too. Jared Dad tries to keep the podcast interesting for himself. Well, you're like, I'm the man, so the voice of the people. I worked with this guy once. I, he does not work with me anymore. Uh, and they would have like social events at their house. And and they were fun. Like we'd go over and we'd whatever, play ping pong, play Wii. Like all the assistant professors would go to you know, it's, I, a party is far too generous a term for this. But we'd go hang out. And this guy loved making jokes that he knew nobody else would get. So he'd say a thing that he clearly meant as a joke that nobody understood, that just insisted that you ask, what does that mean? So huh. then he could explain it to you. Huh. It is the least funny thing to do. It's just like a, a play to act smarter than everybody else. I don't know why you keep looking at me. <laughs> I'm saying to your dad, like maybe on our podcast, full of friends of the squad, yeah. that we don't necessarily make references to things that they don't all know about and force me to go, your dad, we're going to have to explain that. Thank you for explaining it. That was very nice. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> podcast sucks. I'll be, go <laughs> I'll be good now. Carry on. Sorry. So, I've used up my, that's my pain in the ass quotient then. I'm, I'm good now. Yeah, I, absolutely. <laughs> Promise. So I was sitting on the floor, to, changing days, sitting on the floor at the end of last week, and uh, feeding Cheggs. So I, Chief Brody is in my office, in the dark, looking at me. Oh, he just came out. It was just like his little floating white face in my office, like looking at me. Was it a ghost? It, it looked very ghostly. So speaking of... All right, so I'm sitting on the floor feeding Manchega, right? I've got his bowl. We put it on the floor. He eats his food. We call him Cheggs now. Cheggs. And so I'm facing him, and I feel this sort of very barely there pressure <clears throat> on, like, the back, like, behind my armpit on the back, like, you know, at the kind of crease of my arm. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I think this is what it would feel like, like if a ghost kind of put its hand on your back. I'm like, I'm sure just like my shirt shifted in a weird way and like I can feel it now where I normally can't feel it. I'm like, but I'm just going to sit here. This is sort of interesting, like pretending that it's like a ghost. And I turned and I looked, oh, and it's Voods. <laughs> Voods. It was a ghost. Voods walked up and pushed his snoop just, just barely touching me on my back just the tiniest little lean of his head his snoop on my back he's a strange dude <laughs> so i was like oh it's kind of like there's a ghost touching me oh it's boots it is a ghost it's touching boots. me. It, uh, he, yeah yeah he's a he's warming up 
in in ways in his weird ways he loves me now he like comes over and he, he has wags. a happy face when, when you when he sees you he wags scratch his head i scratch his butt and he wags he definitely he's been on the bed he sleeps pretty reliably on the bed in fact he's kind we of have, a dick about it <laughs> we have finally finally <sighs> given in this is not as bad as getting an rv but it's caving in anyway we bought a king size bed <sighs> the we have had a queen size bed both of us have had queen size beds our entire adult life. Well, the successful life. I had twins for yes, a long no, time. Yes, no, we had smaller. <laughs> I mean, yes. Uh, but we both had queen beds before we met each other. We yep. got married. We made the explicit choice. Queen bed, good. It's fine for two people. Yep. Even like hops would get up there, fine. And a couple weeks ago, Guac is up there. He's a great bed sleeper. Brody's up there. He's fine. And then Vood wants to get up. And this happens like three nights. I'm like, I think it's time. I think. <sighs> so we had to measure to make sure it would like fit. In the room. In the room. And it does. And I was like, let's let's just do it. And so the if you watch the snaps very carefully, you'll see that the mattress was delivered on Monday. The bed is being delivered tomorrow and Thursday. <laughs> it's exactly the same bed that we have now. It's just 16 inches wider. It's like one dog wider. Yeah. So, but the dogs have forced us after 10 years together. I don't even know who I am anymore. To, <laughs> I used to be a queen size guy. To and get now, a king size now bed. I'm a king size bed, dude. <laughs> oh. uh, I mean, I'm fine with it. It's just funny that, like, why did we end up getting a king size bed? Because we got so many dogs that want to be up there that really we need to voodoo. Have it. <laughs> he was the, the straw that broke the. the I mean, if, Vink bed wants, bed. if anybody. If any third dog wants to get up there, like we can line up two dogs in between us in the middle. Yeah. And it's fine. Right. But any third dog, even Vink, it's too crowded. True. So. True. And it's nice to have the dogs that want to. Well, Voodoo, I was going to say it's nice. He barks if he doesn't get up there. He's bully. He also sometimes will just climb on you. He can get his two <laughs> legs up there. Will. So sometimes you'll look and it's just like his little eyes and the top of his head, like whoop, peeking over, uh, looking at you. And then if you ignore him, then he can get his two feet up there and he'll put them like on your dad, like claws dug on in. On the chest, so yeah. which makes it impossible for me to get out and help him because I'm pinned. Yeah, but he can't get up by himself. So your no. dad, you know, he'll do this like two in the morning. Uh, oh, it's it's jarring. And your dad's like, it will make a loud noise. <laughs> and then It's startling. You know, I, for sure. And I'm like, what's going on? I suppose. So then I have to get out of bed on my side, come all the way around. And Pick up Vood's butt. Boost his 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 ninety pound self. Yeah. But he's wagging. He's all happy. He's very he's happy. Very pleased. We he snuggles in. Now. He's he's the Vood. So we're yeah. gonna have way more room now with our king size bed. So t this is our last night sleeping on the queen size bed, and then we'll have the new one. Full report to follow. <laughs> yep. There should be a good picture of all the dogs up there. But yeah, just like with the RV, there's gonna be recordings of us saying we'll never get a king size bed. There's no no reason. <sighs> and then it'll be dun 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 i don't hate king size beds i just like they're really big and yeah. I, like i feel like i didn't need it i we hate small rvs houses, and we've always had yeah. small houses like in maryland I don't king know bed would wouldn't fit in there would not fit mm -mm. wouldn't fit up there i mean it's up the stairs i don't think it would fit up the stairs i don't but i think i don't know that there's room in the bedroom for it is it there would, another 16 in like my nightstands all the way you, up against you would the have, door you would have you'd have all bed Right, you can only access it from one side. I think we measured it or thought about it. You can only get at it from one yeah, side. You'd have to get rid of a nightstand. I'd Somebody have climb, would have a table. We'd have to climb over each other to get out of bed. My first apartment was like that. I had a queen size bed, but it touched the walls on both sides. You had to climb up on the yeah, end. Yeah, I mean, I've had a dorm bed like that. But that's oh, not, Jake wants to get up and go help, help the Jags. He, poor guy doesn't have enough traction to get up by himself. Your dad, you're like the master of getting Jake's to flop. Like you go to help him, and he's just like, "Nope, flop on the ground for Ingo." I Me, know. I'm like, "Come on, sweetness, like let's get you up here." And you can get him up, and I'd be like, "Okay, I'll pick you up." <laughs> yeah, it's kind of gotten to the. It's interesting. Like with all the other dogs, I'm like, uh, "I'm not strong enough to pick up this dog." Your dad, I'm going to need you to help, and you're like, uh, "I'm going to have to pick up Jake's." Jen, can you please come get him to stand up? Yeah, because I I hate. Picking him up is a very traumatic experience because he's very floppy. He goes, he goes limp. He does full on flop for you. He doesn't really flop for me. <sighs> Cheggs. All right, we try it. All right, let me get him. All right, Cheggs is now in St. Patrick's boots. It made him a little more mobile, and he has found a different place to lay down. He's mobile away.
Indeed. <laughs> All right. Anyway, everybody else is doing fine. Uh, Inko, you have a German word of the week? Sure. Giftswerk. What does it mean? Poison dwarf. Poison dwarf? It's like an angry, angry little man. <laughs> is it offensive? Yes. It's like someone, it could be like a kid, like someone who's just like spitting hate. Like a little six-year-old screaming at everybody? That would be a gift sack, yeah, like a little angry little kid. Huh. But it can be applied to men, too. Jared, I think you need to pull the mic closer to your face. (laughs) Jared likes pulling his face closer to the mic, but the mic will come closer. I'm afraid to move the mic. Oh. It'll fall off. Or it will something. not. It, it will could. not fall. It's it pretty loose. Fall. Uh, you worry about a lot of things. Inko. I do. I do. I worry a lot. <laughs> yes, it's my training. Anyway, uh, gifts bag. Gifts bag. Yeah. Okay. Nasty little. What's the travelocity guy? What do you call that? The guy with the the, the gnome. Gnome. It's a gnome. It's bag is a gnome. Nasty little. But it's not. It's not offensive to like little people. <sighs> no, not at all. Not, like it's politically more, incorrect offensive it's not that no it's more like you know referring to the little gnome that's kind of an angry, angry interesting gnome. yeah it's more like the insulting children is fine with me brothers grim gnome don't yeah. at me <laughs> okay uh taste of the keys this week it's a good one monday at like 9 a.m our power goes out for wind it was windy it was not for wind no, no. no but like it was windy it happened to be windy. Yes. Power goes out. It, the power did not go out because it was windy. The power went out, it turns out, because a sailboat hit the tie line between Marathon and the Lower Keys. So there's a seven-mile bridge that we talk about. The power lines run that connect Marathon, the middle keys, with the Lower Keys. There's a tie line that connects those two power sections. Yeah. And a sailboat hit it. The mast of the sailboat, in particular. And so the Keys Energy, who's our energy provider down here, they are excellent at Twitter. I mean, two minutes after the power goes out, they're like, there's an outage. We're working. Power's out. We're going to let you know. And then, and then they're like, a uh, sailboat hit the tie line between Mar- uh, Marathon and the Lower Keys on Seven Mile Bridge. Coast Guard is en route. And then it's like, okay, so the tie line's not down. It just hit it. And... Uh, the Coast Guard has asked us not to re-energize the line until they can salvage the boat. And then they're like, the boat can't be salvaged. It's stuck up against the Seven Mile Bridge. And there's these pictures from people who are driving over the bridge who have just like, they're like, snip out the front of their window of this sailboat, like blown up across the bridge. Wedged, on, wedged against the bridge. Wedged yeah. against the bridge. So uh, presumably the Coast Guard was able to eventually get it. Yeah. Did you see it when you went up to the vet yesterday? You would have seen it. Did not. Did not notice anything. I mean, the, the so everyone knows the power lines aren't by the road on the bridge. They're the in the water. The power lines are like little islands. Every mast is an island, and then the lines are hanging over the water, right? So the, the sailboat was in the water with its giant mast, mm-hmm. and it hit one of the power lines as a gazap. I mean, they're islands. There's nothing under them. They're sunk into the ocean floor. Yes, the, the, the masts. They go into the floor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's not like... A little thing that they're on or even like a concrete thing that's like, right they're just there's a whole board all the way into the earth underwater yeah that's right that the pole but as a sailboat in. you can like swim right up to you the can mast right up to them, yeah. yeah which, which it just, did which is not a good idea there's a space that you can do this there's a the seven mile bridge has a hump in it for sailboats to go under and the yeah, power well. lines are adjusted accordingly so there's clearance. This was not there. This was right at the end of the bridge. This was bad sailing. Yeah, somebody clearly was not controlling their sailboat and hit the power line, which has to be terrifying when you're in the boat oh, and you hit a I high be, power line. I would be jumping out. I would be bailing before you make contact. Oh, my God. There's no way that ends well. It, I'm, they didn't no. say anyone got injured, so it might no. have gone fine. The system might have worked. but We wh- tried to look for updates and found none. Luckily, the cell phone service remained this time yeah uh we did have that incident or what last summer 2020 yeah was that a boat that hit it was a truck it was a crash it was land-based a truck that hit a mast on land and took it down and that somehow knocked the cell service out and electricity out 
Yeah, and the cable. I mean, it, it took a pole down in the upper keys, and there's just one. We can't be clear enough how there's just one. <laughs> one cable. <laughs> there's one cable. So if you take out a pole, pa- a pole if you knock a pole down, yeah. everybody down to Key West loses power and cable and internet and cell service. It's like some construction Everything. truck hit a pole, it fell over, and knocked out all communication with Key West and the man between like mile 80 and the mail. Yeah, like I, way up there in the Keys. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was scary because you can't use your phone, you can't use your phone, you can't use any kind of phone. Landlines wouldn't have worked. Yep. Didn't work. I spent we, an hour we did try. driving around looking for a cell phone, uh, for a pay phone, which yeah. you rolled your eyes really hard at me for. <laughs> Such an old man thing I actually to found do. A, a pay phone, and it didn't work. I would have told you that. Well, you know, Those... you don't expect everything to fail at the same time. <laughs> yeah, well, it did. Yeah. I thought they'd, you know, the landline might be underwater. I don't know. Like, in you know, across the Atlantic, it's underwater. It's, huh. it's, that's uh, my scientific notion there. No. <laughs> I know that now. Uh, yeah. No, that was bad. Yeah. So this was just a... This didn't zap. take down the line either. Thank That's right. The so line was still like, up. But it was probably up in an hour again. The power was back in an hour. Yeah, maybe two. It wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was not bad. Uh, so I just checked while you were talking, and it's unknown if there were inju- any injuries on the sailboat as of yesterday. It wasn't so. on fire. No, there was nothing super serious that happened. No. This has happened before. October 2018, we were down here for this um, when we bought the house. Do you remember this? I don't. We bought the house. Like, literally, we came down and signed the paperwork to close on the house. And we were here, and the power went out. And I was like, how does this happen? Like, oh, did we screw it up? Did I not Yeah, was pay? it us? Right. Did, right? Did, I not, right. did we not yeah. transfer it right? I was all worried about it. And no, it was a sailboat that hit the hit the power lines there, too. And it, it came back up pretty quickly. But I was like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, now that we've bought the house, they turned off the power. Even though I filled I did all of the paperwork right, to right. transfer the bill. Like, maybe it got screwed up. Nope. Sailboat hit the power line. They really should. I mean, I don't like... I generally prefer sailboats to motorboats. Like, aesthetically. And I mm-hmm. think if I were thinking... If I were super rich and getting something, I might get a sailboat. Oh, but, my God. But, boy, they hit those power lines. It's bad. Those, <laughs> Power boats cannot do what, what this sailboat That's did. True. Hey, if you want a sailboat, I support you, but I'm not sure I would go on it. Understood. Has nothing to do with your skill. It's the same with the power boat. No, I wouldn't go on that either. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you know. I, I think, I feel like I haven't been on a sailboat. I may have never been on a sailboat in my life, mm-hmm. which is weird. Many of my family members have owned little sailboats. They, they, I don't think they I have. ride a little differently than. I feel like boats. I'd get way sicker on yeah. a sailboat. Yeah, I don't, it's hard to tell. They they cut through the waves more than bouncing up and down on them. Have we told the story of the French sailors' underpants on the podcast? It bears repeating. It's because we've told the the Fat Bank story, so I think this comes up in that context. Yeah. So in 2015, which was my first sabbatical. Yeah. Um. So I was on sabbatical from, I guess, the summer of 2015 until, is that right, 2016? It may have been 2014 to, it was 2014 to 2015. So my sabbatical kind of started in the fall semester of 2014 into the spring of 2015. Um, And so I was like, I have this year where I don't have to be on campus. What am I going to do? Well, I hate the cold, so let's skip winter. And at the time... I was waiting for GR dad to propose to me because we had been talking for about nine months where he was like, no, 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 I totally want to get married, but I really would like to do a proper proposal. And, um, you know, is that okay? And I was like, sure. And then like months would pass and I'd be like, um, are you going to do this thing? And he'd be like, yeah, 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 I just really need to get it right. And then a few more months would pass and nothing would happen. It was a long time. It was nine months. (laughs) <laughs> this food making noise in the background. He's like, I can't believe it took you that long, dear dad. Uh, we Boots, have t- I don't need this. We have told the story where I uh, decided to break up with GR dad over his lack of proposal on the day that he actually finally proposed to me. Uh, 
Yeah, so, I don't like it. I don't like yeah. the story as much as you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great story. I think it's a terrible. You really pulled it out. I literally went into. We went out to dinner, and then we went out for drinks after dinner. And he proposed at drinks. And at dinner, the middle of dinner, I went to the bathroom, and I was like, I'm going to break up with him tomorrow because he he keeps not doing this, even though he's been saying for nine months he's going to do it. And I had the ring in my pocket during your thoughts. Yes, you really had good timing because I no it's, terrible timing. It's not like I had been thinking previously I'm going to break up with him now, but that night I was like, I'm fucking done. This is it. Okay, so that was in May. It did make the surprise better, like the emotional, you know, roller coaster was better for you. Is that what you were going for? No. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I did want to surprise you, sort of. But not like that. Jared had proposed in May, late May of 2014. And then we got married in July. We, I had already booked us a vacation. And I was like, well, I guess we'll just get married on that vacation that's already booked. So we were engaged for like six weeks. Uh, but I knew I was going to be on sabbatical the academic year after that. And I wanted to make plans well before Jared Dad had proposed. So I was in the process of like... He keeps saying he's going to do this, but he might be lying because he's not doing it. Uh, So with a bit of anger in the middle of the spring, months before he proposed, I booked myself a kind of Airbnb or VRBO rental house for two months in Miami. Uh, And I was like, I don't don't care. Like, he's not going to be able to come, but whatever. If he were interested in hanging out with me, he would have proposed to me like he said he was going to do for six months. I had, and just for anyone who's like, I can't believe she was so traditional and waiting for GR Dad to propose, I just would like to remind you all that I did propose to GR Dad, and he told me no a couple years before this happened. In Paris. In Paris, I proposed to GR Dad, and Boy, he said no. was that a shitty vacation? No. Oh, it was the worst. It was Ugh. the worst. Don't go to Paris, people. Paris is fine. Paris was not the problem. Uh, don't propose in Paris when you got days left on your vacation if you're not sure the person is going to say yes. Paris is the problem. It's not. Uh, you were the problem. Ah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so in partially wanting to skip winter, largely wanting to skip winter, and partially in anger at GR Dad for potentially leading me on with no intention of staying with me, I booked myself my own stay that I knew he wouldn't be able to come to in Miami. And when I got there, so it was this tiny, like, 400-square-foot little cottage. It was adorable, pink. But it turned out it was on kind of a lot that had, like, a main house that was itself divided into two places that people would rent out. So the yard was sort of shared. Mm-hmm. And it was fine. A lot of times, like, the, like the main guy who owned the property lived in the main house, and then he rented out sort of a... a separate part of that house that didn't connect to the main i mean they were physically connected but there wasn't a door between them and he would rent that space out to other people too and a lot of times it was empty so i just kind of had most of the place to myself it wasn't ideal but it was okay but they have like a big sailing competition in biscayne bay in miami which is right where i was staying and apparently the french national sailing team always stays in this other house that's for rent in the kind of lot where I was renting. Like it's a my thing. House. It's a th- every year they come to this regatta, I guess, and they always stay in this house. And, uh, the, you know, so they're out there like on the patio with these very delicious smelling foods and their bottles of wine and they're talking like not fucking once did they invite me to come like have a glass of wine with them because they're french which like fine not german they don't have to germans would have invited you germans would have given me dirty looks Mm, maybe (laughs) also maybe anyway so at some point they left the sliding glass door open to that goes into their house, which was out on the, you know, same part of the yard where I would take the dogs out. And Vink was a puppy. I mean, she was four. She was adorable. Six months old, maybe. Peak Vink. Peak Vink. But puppy, little, was not full grown. That's right. And cray. And so (laughs) we come back like... Tasmanian devil, furball. Come back from a walk. And I, so we come into the property, which is fenced. I take him off the leash and she starts running around. Yeah, like a Tasmanian devil. And they're like, oh, look at the dog. And she runs into the house. 
just runs into their house. And, and you were like, get, let me get in. And they're like, it's fine. It's funny. Ha ha ha. It's amusing. Comes out of the house with something in her mouth, which turns out to be a pair of underpants. Some dude's the Speedo bo- <laughs> underpants. Not boxers. I, I think they were boxer briefs, actually. Mm-hmm. You weren't there. They're French. You weren't there. They don't wear boxers. You, I do not want to hear your French stereotypes. These are not tiny underpants. All right. Uh, yes, comes out with these kind of balled up in her mouth. And I tried very hard to pretend it was some socks. Like, oh, she got your socks. <laughs> As I'm prying her jaws open and she's like, no, they're mine. <laughs> they're mine. <laughs> the French guy like, was a little embarrassed. After that, of course, they didn't invite me to have a glass of wine with them. Ugh. Uh Maybe they weren't even drinking wine. Maybe they were high-performance athletes. There were literally bottles of wine on the table I know. in wine glasses. I know. I know. Yeah. This is, it's not. It's it, not. Which, look, it's fine. Like, I am not a social person where I was like, oh, I would really love to go talk to them. Uh, but, I mean, it's a little impolite. It's like one time I was out at um, Front Page, which was a, a kind of bar restaurant across the street from the Capitol's practice facility, which is also where we played hockey. And I was out... I guess with a couple of guys from the hockey team, like we had gone there after you weren't there, but we had gone after like a practice or a clinic and there were like three of us just to kind of like have a drink and some snacks. And uh, a couple of guys from the caps came into the bar, which was not uncommon that caps players would come in and they'd have lunch or dinner there have drinks there so a couple of them come in and the guys i was with were like complete fanboys over these two caps guys and so they're like can we join you at your table so we're like sitting at this table with these two caps players and the i think it's me and two guys from our hockey league and then two of the caps guys and they're just like going crazy they're buying them beers and at some point you know like an hour and a half into this i'm just along for the ride right like i don't fan over celebrities like i mean they seemed perfectly nice but whatever i was like this is funny you guys it's the first time i've ever been out with four guys and none of them has offered to buy me a drink they're all buying drinks for each other (laughs) and then they were all totally mortified and they're like oh we'll go buy your drink we're all gonna buy your drinks man that is not what i was asking for i just think this is sort of hilarious uh but yeah then they were very insistent so i made it all awkward (laughs) which is not at all my intent and i don't think it had to be like that and then i remember one of the guys going like okay i'm gonna go buy drinks and i was like to the caps guys i'm like do you like it when guys fan you know fan out over you like this and they're like oh we think it's awesome <laughs> and i was like man no, we think it's awesome. i would be a little uncomfortable with guys just like buying me drinks all night with people just buying me drinks all night because they thought i was awesome i don't know you probably handle it for a while i could handle it for a while <laughs> i mean i have like a variation on that with the speaking stuff i do right not that like i'm a big celebrity but like i i'm a little celebrity within the conference universe like oh i was the keynote speaker and there are definitely people who just want to talk to me and like have some of my time who, what, the gr did G- not that <laughs> fans fa- would totally fangirl over you i guess if they were like a, a if they were all geographically located in one spot yes maybe. Based on I some of the drinks. live shows afterwards, people oh, the are live really shows are different. happy to see you. They would not leave you alone and not buy you a drink. They I guess would that's true. Obviously, offer you to buy you a drink because they're none also, of you have to buy me drinks. They're nicer than these cocky players. I mean, I and Cuther. There are definitely like when I go, oh, I'm going to whatever city this week for a talk. There are Golden Ratio people who are like, hey, if you like want to go someplace, like here's a place. Yeah. After COVID. When we're all vaccinated and I'm doing more of this, like, I'll totally do, like... Because I'll take any one of our fans over any one of those hockey players. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyway. But we... Underpants. What we... French sailor <laughs> underpants. Vink stole... French f- sailor's not offering pair of underpants. any of their wine. They didn't offer me any wine, and Vink stole their underpants, but gave them back... And the end. But then you had handled one of their underpants, which is which is a sort of an awkward I, thing. I yeah. don't think I touched the underpants, except in passing, prying Vink's jaws open. I let the guy come retrieve his own underpants. Yeah, I know. I think they kept their drawer closed after and, that. And you had the underpants chasm. <laughs> Socially <laughs> awkward. All right. Well, I think that's it for this week. Um, yeah. Until next week. Don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. Yeah, wear a mask and you won't have to bite anything. 
Indeed. Yeah. Bye. Bye. 